One, I'd ask that you would please rise as we welcome Pastor Kate Bruns from Augustana Lutheran Church in Elizabeth to lead us in the First invitation. Lutheran Church. First Lutheran Church. First Lutheran Church. Sorry. Let's, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation, for our community, and for our council. Fill them all, this great land that we call home, and the particular space where we reside. Fill them with truth and peace. Where they are corrupted, purify them. Where they are in error, direct them. Where there is anything that is misguided, reform them. Where they are right, strengthen them. Where they are in need, provide for them. Where they are divided, reunite them. Bless these public servants that they may do their work, guided by a spirit of wisdom, clarity, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote our common good. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we call roll, Councilmember Kwame has asked me if he could address um, the council regarding uh, the statement that he made at the last council meeting. So go ahead, Scott. I thought this would be an appropriate time to do that. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Over the last couple of years, there have been concerns voiced about decorum and respect in our council meetings. And at our last council meeting, I made some comments that ruffled the feathers of some of the folks in the room, and it led to a disruption in our meeting. And I would like to apologize to the mayor, to the staff, and to our fellow, my fellow council members. I should have chosen my words more carefully. I could have made my point in a more respectful way. And again, I apologize for that. Thank you, Scott. And with that, we'll call this meeting of the Fergus Falls City Council to order. Roll call, please. Fish. Fish. Roll call, sir. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm bleeding. <laughs> All right. Yes. Here. 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 Oh, he is bleeding. Him. He's got one. Thank you. Is there a nurse in the room? And we have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's okay. Yeah, any first responders. <laughs> uh, at this time, we will open the floor if anyone wishing to speak to the council regarding any item not on the agenda, please do so at this time. Mayor, council people, uh, Dwayne Cookman, I live on Stanton Avenue. I've lived in Fergus Falls. I grew up in Fergus Falls most of my life. I went away for school, but then I came back. I'm a little distraught about the meeting of, about the golf course, pages 34 through 41, about how it looks like. Dwayne, I, don't, I'm, I apologize for interrupting you. This item is on the agenda, so I'll give you an opportunity to speak, but let's do it. Okay, I want to make sure that... Let's do it at that time okay. on the agenda when the, okay. that item's under discussion. So just be. I just didn't want to miss this one. Got it. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll make sure you have an opportunity. Anyone else wishing to speak? No, you go. Hey guys, I just wanted to come up and just kind of touch on a little bit of um, somebody I believe at the last meeting kind of came up here and said in in shorter words, you know, it's. It's your guys' job to represent us and to represent the constituents um, fully. And I, I just, I do want to let you guys know I have a high, high amount of respect for you guys, all of you public officials. That um, you know, the fact that you guys are willing to do this, I guarantee you guys are underpaid to deal with the stuff that us constituents throw at you guys. So thank you very much for for doing that and representing us. Um, so I guess I really have a few questions. Um, regarding how the code of or the government ethics kind of ties into the way you guys um, make your decisions and represent um, yourselves and your constituents up there. So I don't really have um, much to say up here except 
you know, there's a, there's a few sections in chapter, you know, Title III, Chapter 33 of the Code of Ordinances that, that point towards, um, you know, what, how, how public officials must act when making decisions and recommendations on behalf of our citizens. So uh, I'm hoping that I get a little bit more um, private explanation. I'm not going to ask you for that now, Rolf, but I do hope that I can just kind of understand this a little bit better as a citizen um, as to when it is appropriate for a um, council member to step back and say, hey, based off of, you know, 3310, avoiding bias and favoritism, I have a bias in this situation that makes me not um, the person to be making recommendations or decisions for the city. So um, again, I'm not going to get into the details here. I had a lot of back and forth with the city, um, a lot of council members, and I just want to say I respect each one of you guys and the time that you took um, with me to explain things to me. So thank you guys for doing your jobs, and I, you know, I trust the council's collective decisions going forward. So you guys have a good meeting. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, a nice prelude. In efforts to get the facts right, so I'm not criticized, I have a prepared statement. Thank you for the opportunity to address the citizens of Fergus Falls and provide them with full disclosure of this council's actions. First of all, I wanna thank Mr. Thompson for doing the right thing by stepping down from his position at the city council wish Mr. Thompson and his family the very best. It's public knowledge that Mr. Thompson had been living in Dalton since September of 23. His daughter purchased the home in Dalton for Mr. Thompson, which seems to be a bit deceiving to hide the actual residency. With this information of public domain, I question the city's and the council when they became aware of Mr. Thompson moving to Dalton and why city administration and the city council did not, uh, legal advice, didn't call for the vacancy then. The council could have called a special election if appropriate actions had been taken at a proper time. So with Mr. Thompson's letter of resignation, there was no time for a public vote which allowed some of the council members to attempt to place their chosen candidate. This was obvious play by some representatives of the council. Then Dr. Mortensen enters the race and both applicants were allowed to present themselves, respond to the questions and express the capabilities and reasons for running. As one candidate responded by prepared notes, Mr. Morton spoke from the heart, strong beliefs, military and professional experiences. He's expressed his understanding of ethics, transparency, and doing what is best for the citizens and not letting his ego get in the way. Once individu individuals had completed their presentation, Mr. Shire, looking at Mr. Roofer, asked the council for a motion. Mr. Roofer quickly responded, calling Mr. Kunde as Ward 3 council member. Mr. Rachels made the second, and the vote was three to four. At that point, Mr. Kramer made a motion to name Mr. Mortens as the Ward 3 Council members, while Ms. Jobs made the second. This time, the vote was four in favor and three no votes. This allowed the council to pass a resolution to name Mr. Mortens as a Ward 3 Council member at the next meeting. At this point, Mr. Shar closed the special meeting and called the regular council meeting to order. After the opening ceremonies, Mr. Shire asked the motion to elect Mr. Morton as a Ward 3 council member. Even though the vote was four in favor and three no votes, the resolution needed five votes to carry. Even after Mr. Mortensen's presentation of ethics, integrity, and transparency. This was not the action by some members. These members were sworn, these members have sworn an oath 
and signed a code of ethics requiring them to act in the best public interest ahead of their own. This should have been understood, the importance of these obligations. Some left their animosities towards Mr. Mortensen and voted not to elect him. Shame on them. Unfortunately, this has been much of the practice of the mayor and council members for many years. And many councils wonder why there isn't more public input. Well, we now know. I urge at the next meeting, the Charter Commission to recommend that any vacancies on this council must go to public vote and make this part of the charter. So this political bias never happens again. In closing, there are too many politicians in politics. You need more business people, more constitutionalists, and conservatives sitting to represent the city of Fergus Falls. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Hearing no one, we will move along to the approval of agenda, and I'll look to Andrew Bremseth for any additions to the agenda as presented. Yeah, thank you, Honor. Council members, we do have one item to add this evening. It is a Pathways to Policing grant for the police department, and I suggest that we put that on a consent agenda. We previously uh, received that grant, and this is just adding a, an additional amount to that with the ability to provide that program to one other officer as well. Thank you. And with that, I would look for a motion to approve approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Thank you, Jim. Second. Thank you, Al. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, under public hearings, <clears throat> we'll have two public hearings this evening uh, regarding housing tax rebate for properties located at 522 East Charles and 701 D'Amica Drive. We'll call on our community development manager, Clara Beck. Good evening, Clara. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members, and I'll address both of them at once, and you can ask questions, but the votes will be separate. Um, so the first one on the docket is for 522 East St. Charles. This um, was this is a Habitat for Humanity project. They purchased the lot and actually split it into two lots, so they're eventually going to be able to have two homes on this, what was originally a single-family home lot. Um, they did a variance through the Planning Commission, and it's going to fit very nicely and allow them to connect to the utilities on the street in front of them rather to the than to the side uh, so that is the first one that's up the the cost of that home um, the project cost that's all in is two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars which is well under the limit that the council has set for the program the second the second one on your list is on D'Amica Drive and this one was actually sent in um, sep like a couple years ago at this point, but it never made it into our program at the time. So this is kind of a retroactive going back. Had it come in originally, it would have fit in to the program. Now it is over the limit that council has set, but I'm hoping that you will look at it as if it was brought to you back in 2020. 22 whenever 2021 where there wasn't a limit in place so any questions or concerns i suppose the question is do we know why it didn't get brought forward in 21 i mean was it the county or was it internally in the city the way that these come in is can be sometimes confusing. So sometimes we share an application with the county. So the county would just send us their same copy. And at other times, they're coming in separately to the city and to the county. So this is one that just got missed somehow in, in between. It might have ended up in a spam folder. I don't need, I don't know. Any other questions before we open the public hearing? Thank you, Clara. So at this time, we will open the public hearing for the 
Tax rebate for 522 East Charles Avenue. Anyone wishing to speak to that issue? Please step to the lectern. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. It's back to the council. We would look for a resolution approving that tax rebate for 522 East St. Charles. I'll offer that. Thank you, Tom. I'll second it. Second by Jim. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Roll call, please. Fish. Yes. Joe. Yes. Pauline. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Kramer. Yes. Six. Yes. The resolution is approved. Next, we will open the public hearing <coughs> for the tax rebate for property located <coughs> at 701 Demica Drive. Anyone wishing to speak to that property or that tax rebate, please step to the lectern. See no one, we will close the public hearing and it's back to the council. We would look for a resolution approving <coughs> that tax rebate. I'll offer that. Thank you, Scott. I'll second that. Thank you, Tom. Roll call. Fish. Yes. Joe. No. Tommy. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Kramer. No. Hicks. No. The resolution fails. Moving along to the awarding of bids. We have no bids to award this evening. We have no petitions and communications. Under the consent agenda, there's six in your packet. We have added um, the Pathways to Policing grant that Andrew mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. So there's seven items on the agenda. If anyone would like to speak to any of those items individually, we can remove them. If not, I would entertain a resolution approving all seven items as a I'll make that your own. resolution. Thank you, Anthony. I'll second that. Thank you, Laura. Roll call, please. Fish. Yes. Joe. Yes. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Rupert. Yes. A resolution is approved. Uh, under ordinance and resolutions tonight, we will look for a resolution accepting the letter of intent from the Pebble Lake Golf Course, um, Pebble Lake Golf Club, I believe that should say, right? And directing staff to prepare the purchase agreement. I'll call on our city administrator, Andrew Bremseth. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Council members, just real quickly, I'll maybe give a little bit of a of a timeline and background to hopefully make this uh you know connect the dots for folks but uh on november 6th of 2023 uh, at the city council meeting the council directed staff to prepare an rfp for the golf course management and operations knowing that that contract was expiring at the end of 2023 a month later at uh, december at the december 4th meeting the council voted to extend the lease management agreement with the pebble lake golf club for one year which would be through this year 2024 and to delay that rfp process until july of 2024. at that same meeting the council appointed a subcommittee to work on the terms of the extended lease agreement which included council members hicks kwame and then two members of staff uh, bill sonmore and myself and uh, this committee has been meeting fairly frequently since December. I would guess probably six to eight times uh, since then. Um, we were able to quickly resolve the lease terms. We had those back in front of the council, which were approved. So we have that one year extension in place and they have operated the course so far in 2024. Um, as a result of those ongoing discussions and working closely with Pebble Lake Golf Club, um, they have prepared the attached letter of intent and are hoping that the city council is willing to entertain that and um, have further discussions. As a result of that letter of intent, um, at the last council meeting, the city council voted to, to suspend the R RFP, excuse me, in July and consider the letter of intent at their uh, July 1st meeting, which is tonight. Um, so talking about this letter of intent, um, the Pebble Lake Golf Club is the nonprofit that has operated the golf club since its existence, um, or since the inception of the golf club. And they feel that they are uniquely qualified and deserving of the opportunity to uh, be the ones to operate the golf course. If this letter of intent is approved by the council tonight, there are some additional steps that have to take place. Uh, one of them being a purchase agreement, the other being a development agreement. And I will say that uh, this letter of intent this evening is non-binding, meaning um, you can approve it tonight, 
and it doesn't bind either party to the terms of it, that'll happen through the purchase agreement and the development agreement. So preliminary, but talking about uh, kind of a, a good faith ability or attempt to negotiate the next step. Um, the entirety of the letter of intent is included within your packet, but I'll just highlight a couple of the things that I thought were probably most prominent or of public interest. <clears throat> They're proposing a purchase price of $1. Um, they're proposing or, or we're indicating that um, the course would be sold as is. That includes the clubhouse and the entirety of the course and that it must continue to be operated as a championship golf course that is open to the public. In other words, it can't become a private course or a private club. All equipment and property becomes property of the Pebble Lake Golf Club as part of this agreement. And Pebble Lake Golf Club will begin improvements within 18 months, which must be completed within five years. Um, of the following, updating and replacing the irrigation system, purchasing additional equipment, and finally remodeling the clubhouse, making it a year-round clubhouse, uh, with the estimate of these improvements being close to $1 million. Uh, no development or sale of property can take place. It must remain a golf course, so it can't be sold for housing or other development <coughs> opportunities. Uh, complementary uses to a golf course can be added or provided as long as the primary pur purpose of those uses or improvements is related to the golf course. Um, if covenants of the sale, namely the development agreement, are breached or Pebble Lake Golf Club fails to maintain the championship public course, the uh, ownership of the course comes back to the city. They're not able to sell the course to somebody else. Um, Pebble Lake Golf Club cannot encumber the property by liens or mortgages that exceed 33% of the tax assessed value at any time. So that basically or protects the city that uh, if they took on a lot of debt and then wanted to walk away, um, the city's not left holding um, a property that's upside down. <coughs> They're asking that the city pay the Pebble Lake Golf Club $500,000 total over the next 10 years. Um, in essence, that's half of the investment that they're making in capital expenses, but um, it will be to support youth recreational programming pursuant to the statutes that allow those gifts to take place. And then finally, uh, the property becomes taxable upon sale to Pebble Lake Golf Club. The uh, other thing I'll add is we have a 50 year term. So the uh, development agreement or the intent would be that we enter into a 50 year agreement through the development agreement, um, once 50 years elapses, they would have the ability to do what they please with the golf course. Um, again, if the LOI is acceptable to the council, you can approve it this evening by resolution and that will direct staff to begin preparing purchase agreement and development agreement for your future consideration. And then I just wanna note our existing budget for the golf course is about $44,000 annually. Um, if we did the $500,000 that they're asking for over the next 10 years, that would be $50,000 a year. So you'd see a slight increase in the city budget for 10 years, and then the budget, the budget would be eliminated, which would result in a long-term savings over the uh, life of that relationship. And again, the property becomes taxable, and um, those taxes would be paid to all jurisdictions. So that's kind of the highlights of the letter of intent. Um, I know Rolf is prepared to answer questions. I certainly can as well, or the council members that have been involved in the, the discussions over the last now seven months. And uh, um, it's up to the council as to what the next steps are. Thank you, Andrew. So at this point, we'll get a resolution on the floor. I know that there's some people in the audience who want to speak. So I'll, I'll make that resolution on. Thank you, Anthony. I'll second that. Thank you, Tom. Any questions or comments from anyone on the council yeah question um, after the 50 years what can be done with it Andrew what or what can they do with it so, Rolf? yeah you go ahead Rolf. yeah basically after the 50 years after the 50 years uh, they would be uh, owners of the property with no restrictions okay so they could actually sell it to a developer then sure they could okay I, th I didn't know that I'd and w was that <clears throat> changed or I no. thought it had to stay? No, I mean, I mean, no, it, it, it didn't change. I mean, that's just what their proposal was. I don't know if that's in fact what they would do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, 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 the purpose was to ensure that this would continue to operate at a golf course, at a, uh, a public golf course for at least 50 more years. Okay. 
and I think uh, I, I think they're open to longer if that's the request of the city. But I, I think the conversation was more or less. I just heard Mr. Layton say in the audience that everybody involved will be gone mm -hmm. by the time 50 yeah. years comes along, and you know. Do, do we want to allow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to allow people at that time to make family. those decisions? <laughs> um, I, I guess uh, when we had a discussion, and I uh, had some agreements with, uh, I, I agreed with Mayor Ben, and uh, I'll put that on record. <laughs> and. Uh, I like the idea that it can only be a golf course. You know, looking to the future, not only our future, there's future out there for people who aren't around right now. And I would like to see it stay a golf course throughout other lifetimes. Forever. Forever. And that's what I would like, just because, you know, that's been a part of, I think, a lot of people's lives. And now with with the other things that they have going, I think it's only going to get better. I think it's only going to grow. I think it's uh, only going to attract young people. And um, I'd like to see it stay, uh, the agreement, longer than 50 years. That's just my comment. I'm going to go on record and say I agree with you, Al. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I do also. Yeah. I, I would like to see a... a that my my changed. yeah my yeah. question would be I think that's due to probably the development agreement we could we could do yeah. that and that, my question though is just to be clear um, forty years from now four years from now any council can undo that's the thing I think that we need to be most aware of mm -hmm. right like that that we have an agreement right I mean that is there any any safeguards we have against well, that. <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's an agreement, and um, if they don't follow the agreement, it reverts back to the city. Ownership reverts back to the city. Um, sure, that's you, a good point. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, you got that. Uh, you got the idea as to how long is long enough. You know, 100 years? I mean, <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, and maybe they would be open to a 100-year contract. I mean, you do. I've had 99-year leases that, that we've done. Um, you know, the question is, is how... How enforceable can it be after 60, 70, 80, 90 years? Who knows? I mean, maybe the laws change. I don't know. But, I mean, that certainly can be a talking point, is that you can insert into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, into the uh, letter of intent and say, well, let's just talk about it. Let's say 50 to 100 years. And that's going to be a discussion point. And it doesn't have to be agreed upon right now. Uh, it's something that uh, that will uh, be discussed when a purchase agreement comes back to you, because this all this is saying is we agree to negotiate in good faith with you uh, to try to come up with a purchase agreement. And if we can't come up with a purchase agreement, and we've been acting in good faith, uh, the deal's done. It won't happen. But we're going to make a, a good faith effort to draft and negotiate a purchase agreement and come back with something that everyone can live with. And if living with it means 75 years, 100 years, whatever, we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge later. Could we use a language in perpetuity, for example? <laughs> well, because, because the point is, is, if 30 years from now they're playing cyber golf and golf courses are completely yeah. irrelevant, then of course it's going to come back to, for conversation at the council level, right? But the intention of this council is that they will always remain a golf course as yeah. long as it's viable. Yeah, there's a legal concept called rules against perpetuity, and it's we don't have time to explain it. You don't want to listen to me and waste a waste a July meeting me explaining how that works. But it basically could you get in depth with that, please, Ron? Yeah, yeah. It basically comes down to is that you got to have a defining moment when it comes to real estate. You just can't have stuff go on and on and on and in, into into perpetuity. So there has to be a defining moment, and then once that defining moment is around, it actually has to be resolved within 23 years after that defining moment. So, I mean, it's, we'll get there. I, I understand what your concern is. I think we just pencil in is that that's a negotiated piece. Also, too, uh, what do, I can't remember. What was the estimated uh, tax a year? Um, we don't have that yet. Yeah. Um, they, Your Honor, Councilmember Kramer, they cited what, what it was in Minnewaska, but I don't know that it's going to be the same here. And, and if, I have inquiries into the county assessor's office to give us that amount. And how does that work if they're a nonprofit? They're paying tax? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Your, your Honor, Councilmember <laughs> Kremeyer, um, they are. They're, they're taxable, and they they will uh, pay. The clubhouse will be classified differently than the course, so there'll be a couple different tax classifications out there, and the the rates will be reflected accordingly. So I don't know if you want to add yeah. anything to that, but yeah, I mean, my understanding is the clubhouse is going to be tax commercial, and the remaining portion of the golf course will be taxed. They actually have a classification called golf course, so it's taxed at the golf course rate, Seems whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, other questions, Scott. Speaking as a member of the committee that's been working with this when the conversation began the whole idea of it being a golf course forever was just kind of the baseline mm -hmm. and we didn't actually start putting a number to how many years until several meetings in when Ralph said we got to put a date on this and so we put a date on it and so there for the reasons that he explained and then another reason that I think was important is for those who are on the golf club and the management of it uh, as they do their work and invest in the golf club and in, invest in the golf course and do these improvements and spend money that will come from them, not from the city in one way or another, uh, they'll know that their kids are going to get to have the benefit of what they're investing, you know, for at least 50 years. And I think it makes sense for people that would be looking to uh, be a part of this currently that at least as far as they see in their family, you know, they're going to be able to see that benefit but once you get out a couple of generations there's good reason to have a point of review and maybe we end up with something like a first right of the city to repurchase or something as a detail in there but i think we've gone far enough into the weeds on this thank you well uh, just one more comment i think you know as the golf course is being run now they're doing a very good job you know there's a lot of people that put skin in that game to keep that place going and I commend them for that. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of volunteer hours. And, you know, for somebody who's doing that, and if that's their domain, they're going to take care of it. I, so I, you know, really support those people who are helping out, taking care of it, putting the time and effort in to something that actually is a great asset to this community. You know, it's fun to tell people when that wall was built out there and who built it. Public Works? Yeah, exactly. WPA. Right? WPA. And, um, you know, that's, that's our history. And like I said before, uh, you know, I carried Walt one of those golf clubs around uh, back in the early 70s. So um, it was a lot of fun. It was a great place to be part of. Um, I'm not a good golfer, so I stay away from that right now. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Al. I, I would just add, too, um, that when we look at that $50,000 a year for 10 years, I look at that as an investment in a partnership. They're matching that with $500,000 for a million dollars worth of improvements that we would be on the hook for. Those are improvements that course needs to remain. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Jim. Uh, we're speaking of youth, and right now uh, they have over 120 youngsters out there taking lessons. And I mean, that's, that's the future of our golf courses, all these kids out there. And, and they're doing a fantastic job with those kids. I just wanted to mention that. Thanks, Jim. So we have a resolution in a second, but we're going to open up to the public. I know that Mr. Cookman wants to address the council on this issue. Please, yeah, please do. Again, thank you, Mayor, Councilman. My name is Dwayne Cookman. I live in Fergus Falls. I, I guess I have an issue. You only have one offer, and it's a dollar. How much will the people of Fergus Falls gain from selling this? In the next 10 years, it looks like they're gonna lose more money. And after 50 years, they don't have anything in the golf course. They can sell it, okay? We, don't, we can't say what's gonna to happen tomorrow or in 10 years or whatever. But this really stinks of inside work. It does. Has anybody, 
open this up to other places. You know, like look at Perm's golf courses, look at Alexandria's, Detroit Lakes. They have proven records. You think they would be interested in buying it for a dollar and and making it work? Yeah. From a little bit of research, it's worth the tax value. It's over $3 million. Am I close or, I mean, is it north of $3 million? And they're going to put a million dollars into it? Who wouldn't do that? If you were a good manager, how much money are these golf courses making? Please, look for the people of Fergus Falls, because this certainly doesn't feel like it to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cookman. <clears throat> I might just, re a couple responses for the people watching. Um, it's a non It's gonna be run by a nonprofit entity, so any profits go back into the golf course. Second of all, as I mentioned, we're currently, over those 10 years, would be investing $440,000 to maintain just what we have we're, with needed investments. They're matching the 500000 that the city is putting in. So that's a $500,000 investment that they're making on the improvements of this course. Um, after that, there's no agreement for the city to make that investment. So after that, the, the, we would have a lower uh, annual outlay on the golf course. It's going, to, you know, it's worth three million, but it's not worth anything if you can't sell it. So, it's as a public golf course, and to remain as a public golf course, to the conversation we had earlier, uh, it's not worth the three million to a developer. Uh, that's clear, and the council is very clear. I think that we're not looking to sell this to the highest bidder. We're looking to sell this to someone that will continue to use it as a public use in the best interest of the city of Fergus Falls. This whole conversation started when. One council member suggested exactly as you, Mr. Cookman, that we go for RFP. And we had a council chambers full of people who have invested their time and energy in that course over the last 60 years that said, no, this is our course, this is the community's course. We have a way that we believe we can operate it, still provide the community with a public golf course while saving the city money. And I think that's what the council has seen. And I think that's why we're uh, considering a purchase agreement with the public golf club. If someone came in tomorrow and said, I'll give you a million dollars, but we're going to open it up for a private club or sell off lots, I would not be interested in selling that. I'm interested in make, making sure that this public golf course remains a public golf course for the use by public, uh, by the public of Fergus Falls. So anyway, that's all I have to say. But I, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I can add to that, obviously, um, <coughs> that I think the, you know, they do, they, they have a vested interest in obviously maintaining it as a golf course and they want to grow the business out there overall, which, you know, they're somewhat incumbent, you know, it's encumbered by the fact that it, the city does own it and where, you know, we, we don't have the funds to, you know, to actually improve the golf course over what it is. We barely have the funds to maintain it. And, you know, they're looking at, obviously, you know, their timeline is probably more aggressive than even the 18 months that they want to, you know, get the course up to par. You know, they want to get um, the, the clubhouse uh, to year round, you know, sooner rather than later. And they want to add things, you know, like a golf simulator so that people can play golf, you know, throughout, throughout the year. So, and I think that they have, they have access in, and, you know, a group of patrons that are prepared to put the money in to more than match this, the city's dollars. Uh, so I think that it, it, it will remain as a, a golf course. And that was one thing that they are adamant about as well is, is keeping it accessible to, you know, the public. Um, they could make probably more money by turning it private but the rate would obviously go up to to such a, a level that only you know an, an elite and select few could actually play there. Um, but you know, I think as uh, Council Member Fish said, you know, they are trying to develop the the youth program uh, to get more and more people uh, interested in playing golf. And and for those of you that um, you know, even I don't play golf, but I I go to Palmer's. 
um, you know, you can't get a, a nicer place, you know, to sit and, and have a meal um, than that. And so I think, you know, the, the, it w is a public asset that will remain that way. So, and, and, you know, there's language, hopefully, you know, I mean, hopefully we're not in a recourse scenario, you know, that they will do everything that they say they're going to do. Um, but obviously, you know, there, there's an agreement that will be in place, and if they don't do what they're doing, then it will come back. But, I mean, the parking lot needs work. You know, obviously, irrigation need, needs work. You know, maintaining the golf carts, the maintenance and storage sheds, pretty much everything out there needs work. Um, it's just a question of what are the priorities of where, where money gets spent. Thanks, Anthony. Al? I think just kind of a simple uh, scenario too, or comparison might be, you know, it's like if I, if I was going to rent, if I'm renting a house, you know, basically the city owns this, this land, this golf course. And let's say I'm renting a house kind of like they're renting the golf course in a way. Um, I'm not going to be real likely to put my money into that just because it's not mine. I'm going to go to that landlord, which would be the city and say, okay, I need some money so we can, expand this or do what we can do, make this better. I just think that, uh, you know, I, I think they're going to probably do more with their dollar than what we would ever do with the city dollar. Mm. Yeah, certainly. Did you have a follow-up, Mr. Cookman? Yeah. yeah. So let's take only your example that you're renting a house and the guy wants to buy your house for a dollar. Do you think that's fair a wise man I watched Dilbert and right now he got kind of pushed aside but he said some fine words and he says it's not what you're saying it's who's saying it and what's behind it again please tell me how the citizens of Fergus Falls are going to benefit this I hear 129 golfers. How many students are there? What percentage is that? And how many of their parents golf that would be a part of this? A select few. Please work for us in getting this best deal. I don't see this is our best deal. I don't see a lot of options on the table. And you say, well, we don't have a lot of money to invest. Let me kind of segue here a little bit. On 801 West Stanton, this is another one that's got a thorn in me. Okay, we're gonna, they're gonna sell that. It's gonna be a development. Okay, they're gonna sell it for $950,000. But to clean it up, the city's got to come up with a three, maybe a 5% loan of $500,000. And right now, the tax value of that property, I believe, is like $315,000 that it shows on the county. So he's going to clear $450,000. But then we get $650,000 from the state that we can subsidize this person buying it. So the developer gets property that's build ready, being prepped for $300,000. The golf course smells the same to me. I think we're taking people's word and we're not doing more research. I think there's a better offer out there. And I think there's a better future out there. But someone has to be curious to ask the right questions. How did Greater Bemidji, it was the local people, the businessmen that put in their money to improve their town. Perm, it was the local people. I didn't see them selling off their stuff to other people and not getting a return on investment. 
I see these people working, putting their money in to build their community better, better for their citizens. What PERM has done, fabulous, but it wasn't without a cost. They had skin in the game. They wanted those employees. I think we need to work harder. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Cookman. <clears throat> Any last comments? We're going to call on the... I, I think one last comment would be that the, the people that are operating it today have got a proven track record of turning the golf course around. And they're willing to invest their own uh, money. Yep, yeah, and that, you know, Previously, it was a black hole that we could never shovel enough money into. And I guess I'd, I'd, this is way different than 801 Stanton. Um, this is completely different from 801 Stanton. Um, I don't see any correlation to that. Hey, Mr. Late, did you have a comment? Obviously, this is in negotiation, as Ralph has indicated. And there's discussions in regards to 50 years, 100 years, 10 years, two days. Way to answer that would be, we now know, and I have stood in favor of this golf course under its current management and board. But let's think, once you are gone, and potentially some of the key members of the board at the golf course are gone, change their mind and drive it into the ground and then sell it they can't or walk that. away. I think at that point in the negotiation, it should be as long as it is a public golf course, they control it. But if somebody gets some goofy ideas and it wants to change, you know, I think the agreement needs to have some kind of language in there that would say the next board wants to sell it at the 50th year. No, we want to keep it as a city golf course. Again, if that's 50 years, 100 years, 10 years. Uh, I'm a strong proponent of it. One of the things that the city's done well, it produces a great deal of real estate taxes out there. I continue to see some building out there. It's a good deal. And I think the golf course represents that. And I believe there's a great deal of improvements that can be made out there to make it even better as long as it's locally controlled and run as a public golf course. Term of years, I don't care. Just as long as it's a golf course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Uh, one right, more thing got, I'd like. Could I say one more thing? Sure. Um, we'll you know, on. we talk about, talk about the youth and the golf course. Um, I have a friend who, you know, has a son, and he's in golf. You know, nobody in that family golfs. Um, we've got the lakes that, you know, this course is a nice course. And it brings a lot of the people from the lakes into that golf course. And I just think golf is entertainment. Um, the, I don't believe the business of a city should be a lot of entertainment. I think there's other people who are in their entertainment business know their business better than the city does when it comes to entertainment. And um, I honestly think that they would do a great job. They're, you know, things have changed a lot in the last few years, and it's moving forward. I think it can only go forward. But they really need a chance to do what, give them the, the, uh, opportunity to, to move it forward. I just hope that works out. Um, that's my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Yeah, I'd just say I don't golf either, Al, but uh, two of my kids went this weekend, so they're doing something to, right to attract the, the, the children out there. So we're going to vote on this. Last comments? Did you have? Please. Please, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Council, council members. Um, Cecily Cookman, I live here in Fergus Falls. I just had some very curious questions about this and possibly other city properties. Um, number one, I, I'm wondering if there's some sort of standard procedure and why these properties that 
of recent are not being opened up for bids, such as like Cleveland and, and the, the golf course. Um, I, I didn't understand why, you know, we do bids for like road construction and so forth. Why aren't we opening up these uh, city properties for bids? Uh, making it public and giving them so much time and having closed, you know, envelope bids or something. Um, the other thing is uh, definitely the, the club has been doing a wonderful job. I heard stories of them purchasing things and donating them to the golf course. So they, they've been doing a lovely job, but I don't know if that warrants, you know, almost $4 million in a gift to them for a buck. Um, half of the golf course property is uh, assessed at over two million. The other half is over one million. We're also throwing in all the implements, you know, tractors, machines, and so forth. And then the $500,000, you know, we're, we're talking $4 million. And when I think about that money, the only thing that comes to my mind is that pretty little old lady that came up here and begged you not to do utility fees, that she was having problems paying her bills. And I wonder what she would say to you people here um, giving away $4 million. It just breaks my heart. Um, the other thing is the agreement. Once they have that property and it's signed over to them, how binding is that agreement? That's just a question I have. Because once they have that property, once it's signed, our name is no longer on it as a city. I'm thinking they can just do what they want. No, no, no. The, the agreements mean something. You can enforce them. That's why we have courts. That's one of the reasons. So it's, it's an agreement uh, that would be a covenant that attaches to the real estate. The agreement would actually get recorded in the recorder's office and it would show all these covenants. So they could not transfer it to someone else without that person knowing, yeah. hey, look, the city has all these covenants. I'm not buying this thing until you get those covenants addressed. Otherwise, they're going to be stuck with uh, a property that's been transferred inappropriately, and the yeah. city will initiate a lawsuit to get it back. I don't know. Some of the owners or the people in the club have got some big money and some deep pockets. I'm kind of wondering if their lawyer might be bigger than our lawyer. So I'm still fearful of that. Don't just, be. just a thought. Don't be. <laughs> okay. The city's um, always been, been in good hands. Okay, thank you for letting me. Yeah, thank you, Cecily. I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I just do want to reiterate for the public watching. They can't sell it. So to say it's worth $2 million or $1 million or $4 million, they can't sell that property. So it's, it's really, you know, if, if I have a house or a car or whatever and I can't sell it, it's not worth something. It, that will remain a public golf course. So it's, I, I really want the public to understand that, and I, and I respect this, uh, differences of opinions, but it's, 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 it's not something we're giving them that they can sell and make a profit on. It's a nonprofit club. Any profits they make through the operations of the golf course go back into the golf course. So I just want to make sure that Your Honor, uh, if, that's clear. Yeah. If I may. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and we're, not, we're not missing out on $4 million with this deal. That it's a very specialized niche piece of real estate that only a very few minority of individuals across the country or organizations would be interested in obtaining. You know, it's we're not giving somebody a sweetheart deal. And, and again, to the point where when it was brought up to put it out for a request for proposal, the, up, the outreach from the community, the uprising was remarkable. I mean, people were mad that we even considered letting another group come in and do it. I mean, hundreds of people across the, com the community. And, and, and so it's not like this is some backroom sweetheart giveaway deal. You know, I mean, I, people always allude to this old boys club, but if there's one, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have me as a member. Um, but, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a tough time with it. I know, right? So, <laughs> yeah. but th this, is, this is a group of, of our friends and family and neighbors and business owners and and you name it, and they're very, very passionate about this golf course and, and making it succeed. They're not in it to make money. They're in it to, to make it succeed for future generations, just like the generations before them did. And, and so it's, it's a, I've heard a lot of apples and oranges here. You can't, it, this isn't like renting a house, and it's not like a, a, a massive real estate development. It, it is its own unique 
beast. And, and this council that's been elected by the people uh, has deliberated this issue for a really long time. And we've heard from all of the groups involved and, and we've run it, run it through our attorneys and, and our financial people. And, and in my opinion, this is the way to do it. I don't ever want to see that be anything but a golf course. So whatever we need to throw that in there, let's do it. I know we can't do it. We'll figure something out. But the people that want it are the people that only want to see it succeed and stay affordable and accessible to everybody in Fergus Falls and the surrounding area. If we were to put it out for some kind of a bid, some company comes and buys it, yeah, they might turn it into a private exclusive club or jack rates up or whatever, and we're not willing to risk it. We're going to go with the known commodity that's been running the club for the last 60 years. So with that, I rest my comments. COVID vote. Yeah, we're gonna, last comments. I, I yeah. want to give everyone a chance, but then, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll call for the vote. Go ahead. Um, I've always heard that a business is worth what they're making of that business. And if, if you're looking at the golf course, I don't remember the last time the golf course made money. So it, uh, if, if you're looking at some place that you want to buy and you go and look at what they have done in the last 20 years, it's zero. Any money that they have made, they put back into it. But it's not a money-making place, and it's not worth $4 million. Scott, you get the last word, then I'm going to call for the vote. Okay. Again, as a member of the committee that was looking into this, the two goals that the committee had when we had to weigh this decision were limiting the risk of the city and making sure that this remained a public amenity for the people of Fergus Falls initially forever, but however that works out. And the risk to the city has been in the neighborhood of $50,000 a year for a long time, and now we're faced with a situation where there's a great amount of need for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of repairs and improvements, and there's no stomach on the council for more than $50,000 a year to go to this. And so where are we going to come up with a quick $500,000? It's probably not going to happen. This is a good deal, and it limits the risk of, to the city, and it keeps the public course a public course. And I'll leave it up to you, Ben. Thanks, Scott. Roll call. Fish. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Hicks. Yes. A resolution is approved. Uh, tonight we have claims in the amount of one million five hundred ninety thousand six hundred twenty-four dollars and seventy cents. Can uh, someone like to make a resolution? Call to off the resolution to pay the bills. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second. Thank you. Second. Scott, any questions? We'll direct them to our finance director. Roll call, please. Fish. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Uh, there's no old, unfinished, or new business this evening. Lynn, do you have any announcements other than the 4th of July closure? All right. Happy 4th of July, everyone. We're adjourned. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, enjoy your Thank you.